This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, we have got a package unit here. I believe this is a 10 ton. It's the kitchen AC. I believe it's a 10 ton. Sometimes you can cheat. You can look at the model number. It's a seven and a half ton. So it has a charging chart on it. Um, but you can also look at the model number. It'll give you an idea. 008, yeah, that's gonna be a seven and a half ton. Um, but they're saying the kitchen AC is not working. That was the reason why I came. But then when I walked in, they said it doesn't feel like their other ACs are working too properly. So I went ahead and ramped everything on. I know that uh, every unit is calling, but this is cool air coming out of the condenser right now. It's not hot. So I don't think any compressors are running in this one. So we'll dive into that. And then I don't know if this one's a problem or not, but this one is moving heat I've got a lot of heat coming out the condenser on this one so this unit may be working okay it's making a weird noise from a motor or something but all right well I'm gonna start on the unit I was called for the kitchen and uh, see what we can figure out about this guy I'd say it's probably pretty close to 90 degrees outside and I don't know if you guys can see that but that's ice all over the suction line there's a big old ball of ice I bet you this guy's iced up Let's open this guy up and see what's going on in here. So, there's a little bit of ice, but I don't feel any air movement, so I don't think the indoor blower motor's running. So let's go ahead and shut off the unit and we'll dive into that. Yeah, looks like a broken belt here. So, that's a problem. And there's not a spare either. What the heck? What's the dealio here? Well, I had found a really bad used belt in one of the other ACs. And so what I did was I threw it on here, disconnected cooling, left the filter door open on the other side. Actually, I closed it, but it's warm in the kitchen. So that way it would defrost all that ice while I was gone. I've been gone for about 45 minutes. I got a bunch of belts. All these units take the same belt. So the way that I operate is, is every unit's gonna get a new belt because they're all worn out. And then because they take the same belt, we're gonna put two spares. Even though there's three units, I don't necessarily see the need to put three spares because I'm the one doing the service here, so. Um, and the, all these restaurants are finally starting up their preventative maintenance programs too. So we're gonna slap this belt on here, see if there's anything else going on with it. Um, right off the bat, we've got extremely high head pressure. It is warm outside though. Um, you can see my evaporator temperature is about 40 degrees right now. This is R22. Yeah, we're looking high on the superheat. Temperature splits, not too bad, 19 degrees. Let's go ahead and jump over to circuit two and see how circuit two is looking. All right, circuit two, it takes a second for it to numb. There you go. We're just slightly high on the head pressure. Evaporator's looking really good. Superheat's looking really good. Um, 95 degrees outside. So that first stage though, that head pressure's off the charts. Okay, I'm really questioning whether or not this unit is overcharged or it just has a really dirty condenser. I'm leaning towards overcharged um, based off of what the vitals look like, um, but I know this condenser is dirty, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna schedule to come back. They're actually closing in about a half an hour. They close at like three something PM here. So they're gonna be closing in a bit. I'm not gonna be able to look at the other ACs today, um, but I'm gonna come back and we're gonna go ahead and recover the charge out of the first stage and then weigh it back in and we're gonna pop the top on this guy and clean the condenser by splitting it and really getting in there. Um, and then once we do that, then we'll you know have a better idea. But it's operating, whether or not it's gonna shut off on high pressure on that first stage, I don't know. We'll have to see. All right, we are back this morning. I'm getting ready to pop the top on this one. I've already pulled the condenser fan motors out. Um, pop this guy off, split the condenser, clean it, and then we're gonna go ahead and recover the charge and uh, make sure that it's good and go from there, finish our troubleshooting. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. 
it's dirty but it's not horrendous so okay well what I'm gonna do is start getting the recovery circuit going and uh, while it's recovering I can start washing the condenser I'll just have to put my stuff in a place where it's not gonna get too wet and stuff just doing a pre rinse and look at that it's coming out black so I'm gonna get it all pre rinse get the big stuff off and then we'll uh, get some cleaner on there and really go to town but yeah that's nasty good gosh Hey, right, because we're gonna be cleaning a big condenser um, I decided to get the actual foam gun and we're we don't need uh, the blue cleaner we're just gonna use the yellow venom pack which essentially is just soap it's not gonna etch the coil not destroy it this coil is already messed up anyways but still if it was grease then I would use the brightener but I don't need it so we're just gonna use this one and uh, yeah let's get to it I'm just using the lowest concentration and then we're just going to let it sit for, I don't know, five to ten minutes. As usual, let it work its magic and then uh, we'll rinse it off. I already put it on this side too. Nice and good. Well that's kind of scary because I only recovered about five pounds out of the first stage and I believe it takes a lot more than that. First stage takes 8.6 pounds, and with the head pressure we were running, I wonder if we have a restricted metering device. That sucks, man. Well, we're gonna finish cleaning it, and then go ahead and put the proper charge in it and test it from there. Uh, while I'm sitting here, I might as well go ahead and recover the first stage too, so, I mean the second stage, just to see if we're charged correctly on that. All right, so we'll give this guy a rinse. And uh, it's coming out pretty darn dirty, even though we pre-rinsed it. See, we're still coming out pretty dirty. And as usual, always clean up all the dirt. That way it doesn't suck back up onto the condenser. So I'll just wash it all down the drain. Dang. I went ahead and just hooked up the entire recovery cylinder, didn't even have to do anything and it took the whole charge, 8 pounds, that's cool, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the other stage and see how much gas that one will take. Alright, we are looking at the first stage right now, um, the system's running under a really low load, uh, let's go ahead and scroll through everything, I'm not like super alarmed by anything, everything seems to be doing okay, temperature split is decent. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go to the second stage. Superheat's a hair on the low side, but it's also a really low load right now too. Um, second stage, we're gonna give it a minute. All right, here's the second stage. We're running a little high on the head pressure, but I think it's just because that condenser's all bent up. I'm not seeing any major issues there. Let's go ahead and go back to the first stage and let's see what Measure Quick has to say. Measure quick saying it's dirty condenser. It's not overcharged. Let's go ahead and go to second stage. Give it a second to calm down. And measure quick is saying dirty condenser, system may be overcharged. It's not overcharged. So I'm confident that we're looking good on this AC now. All right, the unit is doing pretty darn good. Um, that first stage was a little low on refrigerant. I did a leak search, couldn't find anything at this time, so we're gonna tell them to keep an eye on that. Um, the condenser is pretty damaged. You know, there's only so much we can do with that. I believe that will answer for why the head pressure is a little elevated on both circuits. But other than that, you know, it's running on a really low load right now. I'm not too concerned about much, but I am gonna say that um, I am gonna go ahead and replace these contactors. They are really, really burnt not looking good at all. So I'm gonna replace all three of those and then this run capacitor is testing bad. So we're gonna go ahead and swap out that run cap too. All right, put in three new contactors. They were all beat up. Put in a new capacitor, nice and good. I test fired the unit to make sure everything was cool. So uh, yeah, we're done, all is well. So this was just a no cooling call for the kitchen AC. We've been getting this weird weather where it's been going up in temp and then down in temp. So for instance, today it's like, in the high 70s 
Um, and then when I was filming this video, it was like right around the 90s. Uh, we hit 100 degrees last week, so this is our spring. It's just kind of up and down. And then here, by the end of this month, we're in May of 2021 right now. By the end of this month, we'll probably see triple digit temperatures for the rest of the summer, essentially until like the first, second week of September, then it'll start cooling down. Uh, typically, I mean, you know, things could change a little bit, but um, we're starting to see a big influx of service calls due to lack of, of maintenance, you know, routine maintenance. And, you know, no, it is what it is. The customers have been trying to save money because, you know, everything's so crazy right now. So, they're just doing the best they can, but we're starting to see more and more of these calls. And because of that, the customers, uh, since they opened up the dining in the restaurants and stuff, and they pretty much can fill their dining rooms for the most part, we're starting to see the customers actually start their routine preventative maintenance programs. Um, and you know, we're still getting a few of these, you know, every belt needs to be replaced. Every condenser needs to be clean calls. You know, we can only get to so much. It's actually so bad that the customers that have started preventative maintenance programs like we've done or one or one or two maintenances it's taken a while to get the stores back into shape like you know um we will go and spend extra time and then you know have to still do more the next pm like you can only do so much you can only spend so much time and when it comes to the routine preventative maintenance stuff that we do you know we have like set fixed prices that we charge the customer but all of that is off the table until we get the restaurants back into shape so every customer that has started their routine maintenance is back up we basically went in there there's no 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 contract prices right now everything's we get you back into shape time and materials however long it time however you know long it takes we do it get it operational and then once we get everything back into shape then we'll we'll roll back into our you know, agreed upon contract price kind of stuff, because the price that we used to give the customer for the preventative maintenance program was based on the fact that we were maintaining it on a set regular basis. And we had clean equipment. Anytime we start, even with a new customer, we always tell them like your first one to two maintenances is just going to be whatever it is, time and materials. And then after that, we can, you know, set up a, a, a reoccurring price, you know, for a, for a negotiated fee, basically, because they give us their work, that kind of stuff. But it just takes time to get the restaurants back into shape. And, uh, you know, sometimes um, it can be hard to get to everything, like I said. So, but this one wasn't too crazy, okay? Although I did think it was going to be overcharged on that first stage, and it actually was undercharged. It was low on refrigerant by about three pounds, which was interesting. Um, but again, that's why... I took that approach of, you know, I want to clean this condenser and I want to go ahead and recover the charge and start over because it can be kind of hard to verify whether or not it's 100% accurate or not. And with these uh, carrier package units, because they only have a discharge line port, you know, uh, the subcooling numbers can be a little skewed. Um, this is a fixed orifice metering device, so we're charging by target superheat, but we still like to look at that subcooling as a charge indication. And, um, you know, it, it can be a little misleading sometimes if you don't have an actual liquid line port um, because of the pressure drop across the condenser so um, but all in all we got the system operational the first or the second stage was you know there was really no big issues with the second stage other than the condensers just being dirty um, went ahead and took care of those contactors because they were looking really bad and also I tested that capacitor when I had the fan motors out I think because uh, it was a dual run cap a 1010 microfarad and I believe one of them was running six microfarads. The other one was running like seven microfarads. So went ahead and changed that out. Now, I did not get to the other ACs yet other than um, I did have another tech come right when I finished this job. Uh, and he went ahead and started their preventative maintenance. It was actually due for this month. So he started that. So other than changing the belts in the other ACs and hosing off the condensers, I did not go through them. Uh, we'll bring it up to the customer to see if they even want to go any further with that. I don't think they're going to want to. They probably, uh, because I had reset the other unit. I, I don't know if I said that in the video, but when I first walked up, it didn't seem like the compressors were running on that, that unit behind the one I was working on. And uh, I ended up cycling power to the unit and it started back up and the compressors were running again. So I think it was, again, without putting my gauges on it, pretty confident it was going to be off on high head pressure because of the dirty condenser of which I went ahead and cleaned it real quick. Um, and, you know, when my guy does the preventative maintenance or finishes it, I should say he's going to go back on Monday. It's uh, 
let's see, May 8th. So it's Saturday, May 8th right now. So I'll have a guy go back out there on Monday. He's going to finish up the maintenance. He'll check on those other two ACs, make sure they're working right. And then we'll kind of go f with that. You know, if, if there still seem to be a problem, then we'll have the customer create a work order and we'll dive into them. So um, I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. If you guys have not already, please consider supporting the channel. There's various ways that you guys can do so. Uh, visiting my websites, one of the easier ways, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, merchandise available on there. Uh, hats, shirts, beanies, sweaters, all that good stuff um, is available. And then you can also support me via Patreon. Uh, I have a Patreon account. There's a link in the show notes of this video right now. Um, right below the actual video screen, if you guys are watching on YouTube, there should be a little triangle pointing down. If you click on that, there's all the show notes. There's affiliate links. There's ways to support the channel, uh, you know, PO box, all that good information is inside there. So check it out and consider supporting the channel if you haven't already. Okay. Um, I do live streams on Monday evenings, 5 PM Pacific on YouTube, where I kind of answer the questions from these videos. And then I also go live. Uh, on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel with my buddies on Friday evenings about 6 5 p.m. We kind of just recap the week and usually just have a nice good hangout for about an hour, hour and a half. So uh, check that out. Both of those live streams are work permitting. So long as I can get off work in time and work's not too busy, then I show up on the streams, okay? Um, again, I really appreciate you guys. It's so humbling to see all the support and the views and the positive and negative comments. I mean, you know, I grow from criticism. So if you got something to say, go ahead. All the different methods, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, um, email, it's all in the show notes. Okay. Again, I really appreciate you and uh, we will catch you on the next one.